I'm waiting for my wife to get out of work. <clears throat> she works four days a week. I work two. Um, and I got to thinking about all the things we're talking about right now. And uh, there's somebody right next to the car. They must think I'm a nut. I'm, I'm making a video. Oh, <laughs> anyway, I uh, want to talk to you about we already talked about stun and, and coil and what have you. And uh, I brought up momentum and how I'm sort of, I don't like to use that word momentum. I like that we we'll use the word acceleration. And I want to talk to you a little bit about inertia and how this applies to blocking. Um, Let's let's talk about a power clean, okay? Let's say we got a kid, he's going to power clean 300 pounds, okay? Uh, when he gets to that bar, he starts off the ground slowly to try and establish some inertia. And somewhere around when the bar hits about just above his knees... He accelerates the bar because he's in a mechanically advantaged position to do so. You know, the shrugs and, and um, you know, the shoulder shrug is probably the most important uh, part of the power clean. Uh, I remember uh, hearing about Tommy Kono back in the 60s uh, in Olympic lifting. He didn't even, uh, he, he did everything from a hang. He would just deadlift the bar, literally stop it, and then snap it or shrug it or stun it okay uh, to get it moving again at, a, at again a different velocity accelerating it changing the, the initial velocity and then adding or accelerating more velocity okay and somewhere along the line uh, that bar if it's moving fast enough develops its own inertia now the bar is I mean, it's just weights. It's dead. There's no, you know, has no animation. It, it, it's it's the power that you're imparting on the bar as the lifter. But somewhere along the line, that bar is going against gravity. It weighs 300 pounds, and it's literally flying because it has inertia. Inertia. I'm doing my Trump... Uh, my Trump uh, uh, mannerism there. Okay, and a good power cleaner, a guy that really knows what he's doing, I shouldn't say power cleaner, but a guy that knows how to clean goes from a narrow, what we call a cleaning stance, to a wide squat stance. He literally jumps from one position to another. His feet come off the ground. So he's obviously developed some inertia, inertia, okay? And he can move his feet for a second there. He's, he's developed enough inertia, enough acceleration to defeat gravity. However, momentarily, his feet come off the floor and he lands in a squat position. He catches the bar, okay? Let's apply that to to blocking a defensive tackle, a big, strong dude. He comes at you again. We've we've established that the uh, the uh, we, first place we don't like to go head to head with defensive tackles. That's that's a losing proposition. But sometimes you got to, okay. And that's just the way it is. Um, but. Uh, let's just say we do it. We we stun him. We we stay in our coil. We don't follow through. Okay. We don't extend ourselves. We stun him, and change his inertia. Whether he's coming at us with momentum, okay, the little bit that he might be able to generate. Uh, more than likely, he's just he's just barely extending himself. He's barely he's he's playing in a coil just like we are. We've got to go get him. Sometimes he comes to us, uh, but very often they just sit. They just sit down. In you, know, you watch the Texas A&M guys. Uh, uh, Elijah Robinson uh, coaches. I think he's still there. Who knows? He might be in the pros by now. 
but they're big strong dudes 300 300 plus they don't they don't get knocked back because they root themselves they they condense I shouldn't say that they coil and they slightly uncoil and they extend those hands okay that's what they do okay but what I'm saying is if you can get yourself past those hands and how do we do that well shoulder roll those kinds of things um, you know we duck we duck the hands okay and stun that man okay and change his inertia okay if it's resting inertia you're definitely going to change it you're going to stagger him just a little bit unless he's really extended or if it's moving inertia you're going to change it just by adding a force that's opposite of that inertia and now you've got a chance to recoil and I, I hesitate to say recoil. Uh, way back when, when Jim McNally uh, coached us, he would say, take another bite. Okay, so this is going back, huh, this is a long time now. Uh, I'm almost 70, and uh, you know uh, this is 50 years. But he would say, if you're stalemated, take another bite. Okay, and what I'm saying to you is, the another bite is a torque. It's either a torque up, up, okay, flipping, or a side torque, okay, a side torque. And those those things, uh, you know, this I think this is the way it works. I, I've watched enough board drills to know that very seldom do, does one guy drive the other one off the board unless that guy is flinching and doesn't want to get hit in the face, okay. Um, it's, it's generally some kind of a torque, okay. Uh, you know, we talk about getting under people and all that other stuff. What we're trying to do is get to a angle on that guy. When we say get under him, we're trying to use him and get an angle. 90 degrees to his chest is ideal, okay? Because that'll that'll be that's the most efficient angle to get 90 degrees, okay? Um, you know, if you study levers, uh, uh, it's obvious, and they'll tell you that. Okay, so remember, uh, we when we change the defensive lineman's inertia or overcome it with inertia or acceleration uh, that we've created, then we can add a force at an angle. Okay, and win, 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 win. Okay, win. That's what we want to do, right? Okay, and it's better to have an angle from the get go. It's better to block down or to block down to the outside, as as Paul Alexander used to say. And, and there's there's plenty of examples to that. The rip and run guys against the one gap players. Uh, you know, you you got that angle. You blast them. Try that against a two gap player, and you generally get shoved into your but unless somebody comes over and knocks him over into a gap, defines him for you, all right, that's my stuff, uh, and then you can add torque to him and, and move him, okay? So anyway, this, is, this turned into a longer thing than I wanted it to be, but 10-4, uh, win.